Why is it that we get a fever when we're sick? And why does that fever often make us lose our appetite? Well, those questions can be answered by taking a look at factors that affect the rate of enzyme activity. Let's start with the pretty easy factor, enzyme concentration. As you increase the concentration of enzyme, the rate of the reaction increases. Now this makes sense because enzymes catalyze reactions, so the more enzymes you have to catalyze, the more reaction that will occur. Now keep in mind that this graph assumes that there's excess substrate present. In other words, there's more than enough substrate to react with enzyme for the entire time. A similar, but not exactly the same pattern happens with substrate concentration. If you increase the amount of substrate in a reaction, initially the reaction rate is going to increase. And that's because there's more substrate for the enzyme to bind with and either break down or build up. However, at a certain point, the reaction rate becomes constant. This means the reaction rate is high, but it's not increasing anymore. And this happens because all the enzymes have bound the substrate. In other words, the enzymes are saturated with substrate. So no matter how much more substrate you add, it doesn't make a difference because all the enzymes are busy working. To make that more clear, let's take a look at some pictures. In this situation, the blue Pac-Men are enzymes and the red triangle is the substrate. Here we've got low substrate concentration. In fact, there's only one substrate. Now, if we add some more substrate, now we've got high substrate concentration. So we're gonna get a higher rate of reaction because a lot more can be broken down or put together. At this point, our enzymes are now saturated. Every single enzyme is bound to a substrate. And this is the maximum rate of reaction. If we add more substrate, it doesn't matter because there's no more enzymes to break them down. And this is why we get that pattern. Increasing reaction rate, but once saturation occurs, the reaction rate remains constant. Now let's take a look at temperature, and this is where fevers come into play. Here we've got enzyme activity. Here we've got temperature. Now initially, as temperature increases, so does enzyme activity. Why would enzyme activity be low at low temperatures? Well, remember enzymes are molecules and they move around. If the temperature is really cold, the enzymes have less energy and they're not moving around very much. What that means is they're not gonna react with their substrate very frequently. However, if you increase the temperature, the enzymes gain energy and they move around more quickly and they're gonna find their substrate more quickly and thus catalyze more reactions. Now at this point, the enzymes have reached their optimum activity. This is the best that they can do. After this point, enzyme activity plummets. Why does that occur? Well, something special occurs at extremely high temperatures. Enzymes denature, and that causes this low rate of reaction. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that the optimum temperature is a little less than 40 degrees, and this is about body temperature in Celsius. So extremes below, below or above are not very good for enzyme activity. Let's take a closer look at denaturation. If you break down the word, this really means to take away the nature of something. And that's what happens to enzymes when they denature. They lose their shape. Here's a nice, healthy, happy enzyme, and you can see it has a particular active site to bind a substrate. However, if the temperature rises, the temperature might break some of the bonds that keep the enzyme in this shape, and it'll denature it. Now our enzyme has unfolded, and its active site is gone. What this means is that the enzyme is basically useless. Without the active site, it can't bind the substrate, and it can't do its job as a catalyst. And oftentimes denaturation is permanent. So once you change an enzyme shape, you can't change it back. Something similar can happen with pH. Enzymes have optimum pHs where they work best. For example, amylase in your saliva prefers a pH of seven. That's because your mouth's environment is neutral. However, pepsin, which is an enzyme in the stomach, it prefers an acidic pH because the stomach is full of hydrochloric acid and it's an acidic environment. 
Meanwhile, arginase, this is an enzyme in your intestines, which have a, a more basic environment. So they prefer a more basic pH. However, if you look at all three of these enzymes, you can see that extreme pHs will lower their enzyme activity. So here and here. And that's because extreme pHs can also denature enzymes, cause them to unfold and lose their shape. And that concludes our tour of factors that affect enzyme activity.